Hello everyone and peace of Christ to all of you. Today our topic is about the superiority religion. You know, Muslims, they are following a cult. Teach them that they are superior. They are superior in their health. They are superior in their belief. They are superior uh, in their prophet. He is the best of mankind. Uh, they are the best mankind. <clears throat> even even their prophet, he, he taught them that you are the superior to the point uh, you can go and bring people with the chain around their neck because a human being are animals unless they are Muslims. And as you see, this is not me saying the statement, it's in the front of you. So uh, their prophet, he made it clear that Islam is a superior cult. It's like any cult we saw in the West or in the East, it doesn't matter where, like KKK, etc. And another cult like, uh, you know, like now they have uh, a new mafia, they use the name of defending the black, but the fact they are, they themselves, they are a cult and they are racist. Anyone who make superiority for, for any ethnic group or any color or even religion, he is obviously a cult. For all of us, we are the same. Created by the same God, we have equal right and nobody is superior to anyone. Me being wrong and you being right doesn't make you superior. That's stupid, actually. The fact the one who is superior they should understand that the one is wrong, he needs his help. He does not need someone to say to you, I am superior. So, as you see here, the Quran says the verse the Muslims are true and, and they are the best of people ever raised for mankind. Means the best for people, of people, for people as bring them with the chains around their necks until they embrace Islam. <clears throat> and this is what Muhammad and they did for the Christians in the Middle East for centuries. They put the chains around their neck, every kind of a chain, insult, humiliation, pain, jizya, kidnapping their daughters, uh, uh, not, not allowing them to have good jobs, uh, uh, like uh, taking their money, uh, kidnapping the children and asking for ransom. I mean, this is the business of Islam. But today we are talking about the superior cult <clears throat> of a cleaning, of hygiene. If you go on YouTube, excuse my voice, <clears throat> it's not coming good. Oh God! <clears throat> I just actually that long time ago woke up. Uh, if you go on YouTube and you search for hygiene, Islam hygiene, let me do that. You will find in these videos <coughs> by Muhammadan, especially those they are famous for, speaking about Islam hygiene, how Islam can fight Corona, how Islam can fight Corona. Islam can fight Corona. You cannot fight Corona. You know. Islam hygiene. is one of the most famous propaganda the Muslims always they try to present to us. As an example, this is a guy, his name uh, Sabil, uh, Sabil Ahmad, Sabil, whatever his name. Uh, this guy, you know, uh, uh, once a person, he called me and we thought it's him. And he said, eh, brothers, this is not me. I don't mind to debate this guy, but he will never debate me. You know, he's a coward. So, if you if you watch the Islamic hygiene, is it true? All those things speak in Islamic hygiene. Is it true, really, that Muslims they have a hygiene? Is it true, or it's a fabrication? Well, we can go. You see, speech is this like I mean, talk is cheap. We can go, and we can examine what they say what Muhammad taught and we will see if this is true or not because I can say you know okay Islam teach you to be a hygiene but how where and then what the Muslims they do they quote something out of something else they don't show you the whole story in order to make you believe that Islam teach hygiene you know like uh, the Muslim they quote for you for Corona that the Prophet said the first Prophet uh, 
if you if you if there is a disease you don't go to a place and you don't come from it but they will not tell you that muhammad refused even that infection can happen transparent trans, transfer from uh, from a person to a person and the hadith is there and he believed that allah is the one who made the first person get infected or the first animal it's not a disease spread and we made videos about it and all of us we laugh but now let us go and see the hygiene starting from drinking the camel urine all of us we knew that muslims <clears throat> they say that uh, the, uh, some people they eat pork yuck disgusting filthy i mean uh, mm, you pork you know you see, first of all, the pork was forbidden in the Old Testament, and Muhammad is just trying to copy the Jews. Secondly, it was not forbidden because it's filthy, dirty, for it was not healthy. Pigs, they grow in the field and they eat anything. And that can be for any animal, which is, you know, uh, can be wild. <clears throat> there is a risk always from wild animals. Uh, but if you can control them and those animals they are we know what they are eating so we know what is inside their meat uh, they can go and eat a dead body of a human being even or uh, you know maybe he died from infection or an animal died from infection or disease this is what happened always for wild animals but all of us we knew that all animals can bring diseases as an example chicken flu uh, I mean, even there is a swine flu but the fact it's not a swine flu. They call it swine flu because it's a discovered first time between swine, but it was not coming from the swine. There's a, the cow virus, the mad cow virus. Uh, so there's bird flu. There's all all all, all animals can you know can bring us uh, <coughs> a disease. Now corona supposedly is coming from an animal too. So how we say that eating pork? is disgusting yuck and then we teach that you can hold the penis of a camel as we see this guy look at this guy i don't know if you can if you can focus with me here this guy is holding the penis of the camel and putting the penis in his mouth and he is drinking the camel. <clears throat> hmm? How you can do that? What is the hygiene? If we go right now to the United Nations Health Department, we will find that the United Nations is is issues thousands of warnings for Islamic countries that camel milk, not only camel urine, is very dangerous for viruses <clears throat> and camel urine is even more dangerous and we can you know we can go right now and do a little search in the front of your eyes so you don't say oh we're making things up uh, <clears throat> what is called the united nation uh, department <clears throat> uh, <clears throat> Let us see. <clears throat> Here we go. Stop drinking camel urine, World Health Organization says. Stop. But the Muslims, they claim that camel urine can even fight corona hmm. so drink camel urine before you go to the Kaaba why the Kaaba is empty right now and while you are searching for medicine just drink camel urine you are fine that's it anyone who got he got corona just give him camel urine he will be he will be kicking like a horse in two seconds so this cult follow a stupid idea of this man his name is muhammad teaching themselves they are superior in everything they do even when they drink camel urine they are proud about it 
But the superiority of Muhammad being clean did not stop there, I wish. Muslims, they claim that they are people who they are very clean. Actually, the Quran, as we know, it's a very filthy, filthy, disgusting book. Imagine if we say a certain group is filthy, they are not allowed to enter this street. Muhammad, he made that for cities and towns in Saudi Arabia. Actually, he made that for all of Saudi Arabia. If you go in the Quran, you will find the Quran saying, وَإِنَّمَا الْمُشْرِكُونَ النَّجِسِ Oh, those who they are uh, uh, not believers in Allah, they are najis. So they are not allowed to enter the Holy Land. Najis mean filthy, dirty, disgusting, and their filth, nothing, nothing can wash it. The Muslim, when they translate, they say the pagans are unclean. But the fact najis is way more than unclean. It's an insult statement. It's very like you are very filthy, not unclean. I mean, unclean anything can be unclean. What unclean? Like my hand is not a clean. No, this is not about you and a clean. It's about you being filthy. And Muhammad, because he is a very filthy racist man, he come with an ideas that because Muslims are superior, all the filthy people should be kicked out from the land of the Arabian Peninsula. As we see in this hadith, <clears throat> Muhammad making a promise, I will excel, I will expel, I will do genocide, I will kill every single Christian and Jew and expel them from the Arabian Peninsula, as you see in the front of you. While Muslims, they spend the day and the night telling you that Muhammad was a very tolerant man and he allowed the kuffar to stay, you know, read it carefully. This is what happened and this is why until now there is a zero citizen zero citizen in this land who is a Christian or he's a Hindu or he's a Buddha or he's an atheist have you ever heard of a country a country of normal people not monks country have women and men getting married and have children zero atheist zero Christians Saudi Arabia they have employees who they are coming from overseas to work but those are not citizens we're not, we're not talking about those from different religion because they need them they allow them to come but muhammad because he's a very filthy disgusting person he made it clear that he will excel the christians and the jews from the arabian peninsula we hear today that those people you know the mafia of the liberals they are talking about they want to take down jesus well isn't it jesus he says for god loved the world he sent his only begotten son, the whole world. Not the black, not the white, not the yellow, not the blue, not the red. But they, not, they will not say anything about the garbage of Muhammad and the racism. While Jesus, he unite us. Stupid liberals, they say they want to take Jesus. Good luck with that, by the way. Just try. Just go ahead and try. Then you will know your size. Until now we are watching. But there is a limit of watching. We can go in the street too. We are watching because we find you silly and you are little in number. But as we are watching about Islam too, but about Islam, you know, we are exposing them and we find that the best way to expose Islam is to share the truth as our Lord ordered us to do. Erdogan, he just took our church, a filthy thief, in the year 2020. And the whole world is watching. We are watching. No problem. But we will have it back sooner or later. The superiority of this cult is based on the stupidity of this cult. If we go and see how Muhammad, he take a shower, The verse, you are a true Muslims are the best people ever raised for mankind. Okay, is the best mankind, they take a shower like Muhammad, who jump always in a water full of dead dogs and women of blood from period 
and the water is not even in the size of a jacuzzi. And this is Sahih Hadith, as you see. I heard the people that uh, people asked the Prophet, water brought for you from the will of Buddha. <clears throat> it's a will which which dead dogs and me, uh, menstrual uh, clothing extre uh, like experiment uh, people are thrown in garbage you know he said it's okay it's a pure you know it's a pure no problem and what what is the size of this water it's in the size of a of a of a coat a man he wear it in his in the top of him a coat of a man this is the size of the water. It's not even a jacuzzi. Muhammad is swimming with dead dogs and women of blood from period. How many Muslims they are following their prophet step? As long he is the one to follow. The people ask the measure of Allah. Can we perform evolution out of the will of Bida, which is a will? into which minstrel do, uh, clothes, dead dogs and stinking things were thrown in. He replied, water is pure and it is not defiled by anything. Is that what the World Health Organization says? And this is what the superior clean people, they believe? That we can jump in a jacuzzi full of dead dogs and women of blood from period and garbage and yet nothing make it bad? Uh, <clears throat> there's too many hadith saying the same thing and all of them they are sahih once there was a man walking by and he found Muhammad doing the same jumping in the water washing himself with such a sewage water this is a sewage line i mean obviously actually it's not a line the sewage even is even way better because it's running water at least this is just a little contained water dirty water and nobody nobody even touch it that's why people are asking him are you can we do that is it really are you sure you see, if this is something normal, people will not question. Because we do it all the time, right? So, so the question is, you know, how you can how you can do it? How you can do such a thing? So the superior cult of Islam, which is speaking about Islam is a religion teaching you to be hygiene, is a big fat lie. This is, this is the best hygiene. This is the Prophet. This is the daily shower Muslim they should do. Even this is the five-time way to wash themselves to prepare for the prayer. Five times a day, they can use water from women's blood from period, dead dogs. And even actually there's a, there's a hadith about a donkey was inside the thing. A donkey, a dead donkey, as you see actually in the screen already. We came to the pond in which was the uh, like the, the little water there. There was a donkey, you see it? And we refrained from using the water. Enter the Messenger of Allah come to us and said, water is not made impure by anything. I mean, look at this. There is a, and here it says that if anything is embarrassing. But anyway, the rest of the hadith, all of them, they are coming as authentic. There is a donkey, and the reason, by the way, the Muslim they come with is da'if. Da'if is accepted still, by the way. The Muslim they use execute, they say da'if. Everything is too much. It's too much. The Muslim they say it is da'if. I mean, this is disgusting. A donkey, the whole donkey, which means if you jump in the water, you will be literally between the legs of the donkey. Literally. And then Muhammad, he said to them, so what? Water is always, always pure. Nothing make it impure. Even a dead donkey in that water, little water, what a big deal. What a big deal. Dead dogs, what a big deal.
Do you see it? All of this, teaching the same garbage. So, uh, when, a, when a Muslim, he speak to us about superiority of being clean, how accurate this superiority to the point teaching your followers that water is always pure and nothing make it impure. Uh, Muhammad, as an example, he said that if you eat, you have to lick your fingers or let somebody lick it for you. How healthy is that? Either you lick it or let somebody lick it for you. And look, the Muslim, they try to make it look nicer. They say, uh, such a wife and a husband agreed upon, agreed upon. So you finish eating, you don't wipe your finger, you know, your hand with a, with a tissue or wash it. No, you put your finger in the table, your daughter, she will come and lick it. Your wife will come and lick it or a slave. Actually, different hadith says it clearly, or a slave. And this is mentioned in Al-Bukhari and Muslim, and it is very authentic. But they are superior in their, uh, uh, in, their, in, their, in their belief. I mean, they are the most clean people. If you ask a Muslim, why you Muslims hate dogs? They say they are filthy, dirty. Okay. But if we go back in the time of Muhammad, we will find that Muhammad and his followers, they used to have dogs getting inside the most holy mosque. They piss in it and nobody clean after them. And this is Sahih al-Bukhari. My father said, during the lifetime of Allah Apostle, the dogs used to urinate and pass through the mosque, come and go. Nevertheless, they never used to sprinkle water on it. On what? The urine of the dogs. And this is Sahih Bukhari, very authentic. So the question is, the superior cult of Islam, which is speaking about how clean they are. Is it based on something real at least? Or it is a fiction of superior fiction? Is it true that Islam is a superior of uh, hygiene? Or the truth is that Islam is the most disgusting religion ever for hygiene and can cause your death. Muhammad, he claimed that he have special treatment from Allah. Let me see if I can find this hadith. And what is the treatment? That there is lice live inside his body. He's a special. Muhammad was suffering from high fever because of a lot of lice on him. He claimed that this is something superior because Allah. He tests his prophet with those things. He tests. Muhammad, he said to his followers, don't curse the lice, for they wake up a prophet to pray. Sound like a Buddha statement, you know but it's silly and shallow, 
we know that lice is very harmful they can spread diseases in your in your body they can uh, destroy your hair uh, you know they can it, it can it can do many things if we go in different hadith we will find that Muhammad he was a regular customer to a woman her name is Ummu Haram he used to go and lay down and she take the fleas and the lice from his hair and his body it says here it's related from 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 okay it says that the prophet uh, he visited Ummu Haram and she fed him and one day the prophet came etc etc you know they are reporting the story and then she said and he sat down and she delos his hair she was taking hair taking lice from his hair obviously the hygiene of Muhammad is working now he is full of lice which is really nice proving to us that Muhammad was very successful of fighting illness and disease. I saw once uh, a video of a guy, his name James White, Dr. James White, and this guy is an idiot. He said that Muslims were saved from uh, the plague and disease. The fact this is a big stupid story. Many people, they, you know, the reason not too many report about plagues in Arabia, because they were not important, they are just Bedouin, they are not part of history in somehow. Historian, they are exist located mostly in civil countries and they report what happened in civil countries. But the plague was eating them alive and they were dying by tens of thousands. The same as now, actually. They say to you in Egypt, they have now zero corona. Who is going to believe in this? Nobody. The Iranian government was saying we have only 5,000 people who they are infected with corona. Just a few days ago, by mistake, the president, he announced that 25 million people have corona. 25 million. Once I went to Medina, where was an outbreak of a disease, and people were dying rapidly. All of us, we knew that the Muslims, they practice, and now actually they are going to practice this, they will go and kiss the black stone. And now if we go to live broadcast of the Kaaba, let me see if I can find the YouTube for a channel for it. You will find the Kaaba, life empty. <clears throat> totally empty. No, it's not playing for some reason. Give me a second. The square of the Kaaba, the around the Kaaba, the whole place is, is empty. There's no way there. <clears throat> Let us try to find a picture because this thing is not working. Life. This is the Kaaba. Look how empty it is. Why they are forcing people not to come? If this was in the time of Muhammad, that would not happen. Because Muhammad told them, he promised them that disease and plagues and those diseases will never enter those cities. They are protected by the angels. But we just showed you that Muhammad is a fraud. He said the same about the city of Medina. And we show you the hadith saying that thousands and thousands of people, they are dying rapidly from a spread of a disease.
Let us see which hadith it was. As you see, and this is Sahir Bukhari. They cannot say it's weak. But it is Muhammad who said that this city is protected by the angels. And let us find you the other hadith for that too. And actually this is alone proof that Muhammad is a false prophet. And we knew that anyway, but we are just trying to share some education. Muhammad he said, لا يدخل المدينة الطاعون ولا الدجال. Let us read together. Do you see it? Allah Apostle said, there are angels at the mountains pass of Al Medina, so that neither plague or a Dajjal can enter it. And then we find that people were dying by thousands in the same city, the same town, by the plague. Do you see it? And remember the Medina, the Hayith is talking about Medina, but Medina is so close to, to Mecca. I mean, there's no way it's going to spread in Medina, it will not be in Mecca. So this is the whole area is infected, and thousands and thousands of people, they are dying. But Muhammad, he promised that the angels are going to protect the city, and those angels will never allow such a thing to enter. Because simply the angels are there. What are you talking about? I mean, this is the angel fighting Corona. And now the Kaaba is empty. But why the Kaaba is empty? Because the practice of the Hajj is not only unhealthy, it's very dangerous. Bringing people from around the world, and there is no space, even a room for you to walk. A million or two in a small, tiny square, which is impossible. To the point they step on each other, and one of the Hajj, more than 5,000 die because they step on each other. Imagine, in one day. 5,000 people. And to make it more horrible of the hygiene of Islam, Muhammad ordered his followers to kiss a stone. And this stone has a very ugly, bad history. It's a big, big in a stone. This stone was made in the shape of a vagina, presenting the God of fertility. The Arab, they placed this stone in the Kaaba. So anyone, his wife, she cannot have kids. Any woman, she cannot have babies. She go and touch her private part when she have her period. And then she put her hand inside the black stone. Praying for Allah the pagan god, the god of fertility, to make her have a baby. And the men, they come after that, and they insert their penis in the black stone. You see, the structure of the black stone right now is different from the way in the place. You see, the Kaaba was destroyed many times. Now it's high in the, in the face. And like in the standard of the of the face of a human being, but before used to be down. So women they put their hand in their vagina, and actually this is mentioned in, in Islamic books that women they touch their vagina when they have their period, and then they place it inside the black stone. And this is what made Muhammad say that the black stone was white like milk, and the sin of a human being make it to black. And here we see another racist teaching that sin make you black. White is, is the color of the good one. So what make the stone black? It's a sin of a human being. So sin of a human being, being 
will make you black. And we, we know we mentioned many verses in the Quran speaking about Allah will make all human who they are not believing in him black in the judgment day and all the human who believe in him white in the judgment day. So how healthy it is as long to our topic today about hygiene, how healthy it is or how dangerous it is, which one? To have a black stone and two million they will kiss it within a few days and then they will go back to their country. Hajj is the most dangerous place for the lowest hygiene and spread of diseases. Actually, the first time coronavirus, you know, corona have different names, like 19, 12, etc., was discovered in Mecca, sorry, in, in, in Jeddah, which is a close, very close to Mecca uh, during the Hajj time. This is the best way for a disease to spread. If somebody is an evil, if, a, if an evil person, like let's say Dr. Evil, which is Muhammad in this case, want to spread diseases, the best place is the Kaaba. Those people, they go to their countries. Where their country? All over. Each one, he go in the airplane and he have with him the disease. Not to mention that this is a very disgusting belief. I mean, why you kiss a stone? It's a stone. And the funny, the Muslim, they say to us that they are not pagan. They are not pagan. I mean, come on, are they? They are not. But they are the one who kisses stones, not us. So where is the hygiene of Islam? How truthful it is. We discover that Islam has zero hygiene. It's not even exist, it's a lie. It is the opposite. Their prophet used to wash with dead dogs. Dogs enter the mosque and pass by and nobody sprinkle water. Muhammad is full of lies. Muslims dying rapidly by thousands because of a spread of disease. Taking shower with women blood of period. Dead donkeys. As you see it. In the same time, the unique thing about Muslims, they accuse you of what they have that you are the one who have it, not them. According to Muslims, Buddha people are dirty. Hindu people are dirty, Christian are dirty, Jewish are dirty, atheists are dirty, all of them, everybody is dirty. They are the only one who is clean. And then we find that their prophet, full of lies. I mean, uh, once there is a guy, his name uh, uh, Osama. This guy is, is, is a Muslim kid. You know, all those Muslim kids, they don't know anything about Islam. So he said, uh, he, he took the microphone. He said, Christian Prince, you Christians are filthy, dirty. You don't even, we do, we do, we do five times a day or whatever, you know. So, he, he, and you are full, all of you full of lies. So I said to him, so what if I am full of lies? Does that make me dirty? He said, for sure. I mean, for sure, you know, if you have any lies in your body because you are dirty, hello, you know. I said, are you sure, Abdul? He said, I'm very sure. sure. So, you know, I play always this game with them, are you sure? So he insists, and then after he insists many times, so I showed him the hadith where it says that the prophet was full of lies. You should see what happened. So they insult you, they say, you have lies. Well, we don't have lies, where's the lies? And then we find that they are the one who have the lies. Islamic cult accuse you of everything filthy, but the fact it is Islam who have that filth, not you. As an example, they speak about uh, in the West, women, they sleep around. Women, they sleep around. The fact the one, number one who sleep around is Islam and Muslims. Four wives in the same time, this is sleep around. Four wives in the same time. This is five some business. And actually, this is remind me of one more thing I did not mention. There's many things about Muhammad being filthy. But can you imagine if a Muslim today, he speak about being clean, having sex with 13 women in the raw, and then after he having sex with them, 
he did not wash until he finished wash with all of them. Can you believe it? A man, he is the best of mankind, having sex with 13 wives. Let us see the hadith. <clears throat> and after having sex, look at this. It was narrated from Anas that the Messenger of Allah, PBUH, this is the degree in how clean he is. He used to go around to all his wives and perform one ghusl, which means one wash. Do you see it? How this is, can be the superior religion and Muhammad the superior prophet of being clean? Look at this. The prophet SAW used to have intercourse with his wives one after another. Here, here and I want to I wanna stop about one after another. I mean, are we talking about a human being or we are talking about a beast? You see, the Muslim, they believe that this is a true story and it's not fabricated. For me, I believe Muhammad penis never worked and even the Quran mentioned that and he cannot have kids and the Quran mentioned that. The Quran says Muhammad was not the father of any of your men. Why? Because he cannot have kids. But we go with the Muslims. The Muslims, they are saying that the Prophet used to have intercourse with his wives, one after another. One after another. How we can explain such a disease? This is a disease. An Indian guy is saying, have you ever read in the Bible? I mean, uh, I mean, look, uh, when, when somebody, some people, they try to be smart, supposedly. Like, this guy now is a smart. This guy is a smart. Have you ever read the Bible? Obviously, no, I did not. You are the one who did. <laughs> Idiot. So, the prophet used to have intercourse with his wives, one after another. And by the way, you notice the Muslims, they try to change the topic. I mean, look, are we going to find a Muslim once in a lifetime? He don't change the topic. The second you show them something very embarrassing, they change the topic. Uh, let us talk about uh, the, the internet speed. Uh, 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 can you show us your Bible? Uh, are you a Hindu? Uh, show us uh, the Hindu. They will not answer. This is our topic. Why you don't answer? A prophet of God who is busy praying to Allah, having sex with one after one, Okay, question. How long it take the prophet to finish with each woman of his women? Hmm? If you say to me five minutes, that means he's a rabbit. How long it take him? Like, come on, Muhammad is powerful. There's no way he will finish in five minutes. Like, hello, he's the best of mankind. That's mean Muhammad, he spent a day doing nothing except boom, boom. And the boom, boom done by taking his private part, inserting it again in different human being without washing. This is the hygiene of Allah Messenger. Even Muhammad, he told his followers, that each one of them he will have the power of 40 men in heaven and he will have the power Muhammad uh, of 100 of those 40 which means he have the power of 4,000 men in sex even the power of Muhammad is about sex not about his brain you know he's a stupid guy as an example once uh, a blind man he was coming to Muhammad and he ordered his wife to wear hijab 
the wife, they said, but isn't it he blind? They said, yes, he is a blind. Are you? <laughs> and here you see the low IQ and the stupidity. So what do you mean, are you? They are wearing hijab, still they can see. So he ordered his wives, and when the wives who they are female, Muslim, they consider women are stupid. Muslim, they consider women have half a brain. So the half a brain, according to Islam, not according to me, said to the full brain, Muhammad, well, he's a blind. Why you are you ordering us to wear hijab? He said, really, he's a blind, are you? Let me see if I can find the hadith. So we can laugh. <clears throat> because they might say, they might say, this thing has to be true. I mean, there is no way our prophet is so stupid to say such a statement. I mean, come on. Muhammad, he said that. Let us see. I'm trying to find the hadith. Because they have many versions of it, and all of them they are stupid. Oh. Lord have mercy. Stupidity is amazing. I have the hate in front of me in Arabic, but I'm trying to find it in English. You see, I cannot find it in English. Let me see. Different place. Give me a second. I, I don't like to mention something without. Uh, without showing reference. You know the Muslims. You show them reference till they say you are a liar. I mean, we put the reference in the screen in front of their eyes. And they say it doesn't say that. Here we go. We found it. Read carefully and laugh at the stupid Muhammad. Officially, stupid idiot. All those hadith and they are sahih. Sahih. Let us read. This one here, it says da'if. This one here, it says da'if. But da'if, it passed. This one here. But let's read together. I was with Messenger of Allah while Maymuna blah 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 with him. Okay, and then Ibn Umm Maktoum, he came. And this guy is a blind man. So he said, observe the veil from him. We ask Allah Messenger, isn't he blind? Allah, uh, Messenger of is, is he not blind? He can neither see us nor recognize us. He cannot even notice if they are here or not. The Prophet, he says, are you both blind? But all of us, we knew that this is very stupid. Muslim women, they are allowed to use their eyes and see. They were hijab to prevent the man from seeing them, not the opposite. What is the wise man? I mean, this is the most stupid statement ever. This is the level of the intelligence of Muhammad. He is extremely stupid. And this is what happens when you follow a stupid man. He teaches you that lice is okay. Taking shower with the donkey, the dogs, warm blood from period in a little tiny path. Jacuzzi. It's okay. It's healthy. Kissing the black stone is healthy, which they spread a lot of diseases. Dogs enter the house and they piss the house of Allah, the mosque, which means that will spread a lot of illness and diseases. In the same time, he ordered them to drink camel urine. So pork is haram. Drinking camel urine is halal and healthy.
So can we really consider Muhammad a prophet of God? Can we really consider what Muslims claim about they are superior? Is it true? Superior in everything. They are superior in everything. You will not find one thing the Muslim don't claim to be superior with. For this is a religion of superior white man cult. The Hadith says, if somebody says the, black, the Prophet is black, kill him. The Hadith says that Allah created the black people from the left shoulder of Adam after he hit it and he say, and you go to hell and I don't care. And he created the white people from the right shoulder, right and left in religion. It's about right and wrong. So the white people according to Islam created from the right shoulder, black people created from the left shoulder. I don't know where the Asian people created from. I mean, here we go, we are out of arms. So where is the superiority of this cult? And if you look in the chat, in the text, we have many Muslims, not a single Muslim, he can answer us. And how it feel to put your mouth when you insert in your mouth a penis of a camel to drink the camel urine as your prophet told you. Look like this is how Muhammad used to do it because remember Muslim, they do it as a sunnah. This guy is holding his son holding the penis of the camel in the front of his face so he can suck it. Do you see it? This man here is holding the penis of the camel and he's an adult, so he can suck it. So we have to admit, and we have to agree, that Islam is really a very hygiene religion. Actually, if you want, if you are moderator, moderate, you can take a cup and lift up the tail of the camel and uh, get the, you know, you don't have to put your mouth there in his penis. Hello. I mean, like, like today uh, we learn from the Western, there is something that's called the cup. So look, this guy, he is putting a cup under the, the penis of the, the camel. And he is collecting the, you know, and he's like, we are going to have yummy now. It is time for yummy. Who want to have yummy? And this guy is promoting a product. He is selling camel urine. Do you want to buy some? If you go to a Muslim who is superior Muslim, not like us, you know, we are normal human, they are superior. You open his refrigerator, you will not find beer, you will find camel urine. It's a proven brother that camel urine, actually there's an article made by uh, Zakir uh, Freak, let me see if I can put it in the screen. <clears throat> yeah, this is Zakir Naik. And the funny, he is a doctor. He is what? He's a doctor. Doctor Zakir Naik. Camel urine as a treatment. This is Zakir Naik now. This is his post. Brother Titor, it's very well known that camel urine can be very healthy for your dependent. There are several scientific models removed. And in the past, it was represented at the time. That the camel urine is a benefit in certain disease. In Medicina said, the most benefit of urine is the Bedouin camel urine. The Medicina said, that's it. <laughs> you know, you see, the funny, they say to you that camel urine is effective to treatment of a skin disease. But you idiot, those who use it like an old tradition, they don't drink it, you donkey. They jump in it. It's an asset. This is, this, is, this is the benefit. You don't drink it. Those who treat skin diseases with camel urine, they use it in the top of the... It's because it's a very concentrated acid, but it can bring a lot more disease from the disease trying to, have to fight. But this is a desperate measure for a person who don't have medicine thousand of years ago but they don't drink it and not camel urine they use different kind of urine but urine is a urine and a stupid idea to use it as an example the Roman they used to use the urine as a detergent actually to wash the clothes 
and then they wash it with clear water, clean water. Why? Because urine is very high acid. So when you take the urine inside your kidney, inside, inside your body, inside your stomach, you are destroying, destroying your liver, destroying your body. This is a lot of acid. This is a pure, and actually the camel acid is way more strong from a human being acid. Why? Because the animal is, this animal is designed to live in an area where there is no water. So what his body does, he filter any possible water from the urine to make it the less water ever he can get rid of it because he needs to survive. He is an animal who lives in the desert. This is why camels can live way longer than any other animal without water. Why? Because when they pee, they don't pee too much water. They store the water inside their body, so they are peeing out a very strong acid. But for sure, Zach and Nike knew what he's talking about. He is, you know, right? Uh, an Indian guy saying, and from where Islam or Muhammad copy, isn't it the Bible? You have to show me where in the Bible it says drink camel urine. Go ahead. I think this guy is a Hindu. Maybe he's upset because I got the uh, uh, sad guru busted. Show me, show me, my friend, Indian. Show me where in the Bible it says you drink camel urine. Because you are saying Muhammad, you copy from the Bible. Show us. Go ahead. Go ahead. Why well, you are repeating yourself like a kid, Mr. Indian? You see, if you want to talk as an adult, go ahead. If you are a kid need a spanking, we give you the spanking. Because now everybody is laughing at you. Either you show us the faith of the Bible, or you shut up. You see, I did not block you in the chat. You are free. Give us the faith of the Bible. Go ahead. Very embarrassing. Like a kid, dot. I did a step in your in your tail. He wanted to call me in my Skype. Oh, the, the Indian guy. Oh, okay. Okay, I will open my Skype just for him then. <clears throat> Give me a second. Actually, I wanted to make this video short. Maybe we we can finish this video now, and we come back on live in 15 minutes and he can call so people can download it easy what do you think guys because we want to make it easy for people to download yeah yeah you can call me actually you know what I will take your call before I go because I am sure you are very very powerful I have a feeling I don't know <clears throat> I'm logging in my Skype. <clears throat> what is your name in Skype, Mr. Indian? What is your name? Text me in Skype. I will call you back. <clears throat> My Skype is open. Text me. Don't waste my time, I'm waiting. No, not Debate TV 1. Debate TV. I don't have Debate TV 1. Actually, even this Debate TV, I'm going to stop using this account because it has tens and tens of thousands. It's impossible even to see the names and people text. You know, one of the bad things about Skype, uh, Hussein. Uh, 
uh, yeah, but we want we want this guy, the Indian. What what happened to the Indian? I mean, look at this guy. We are we went in Skype just for him, and now he don't want to talk. The fact the Bible forbid forbid totally not only to drink anything from the camel, not even the milk even the meat of the, the camel, so you are stupid. And actually even Muhammad, he says that. Muhammad once, they brought for him, or so he saw a rat. And Muhammad, he decided that those rats are, they must be Orthodox Jews. How that can be? Because he noticed that those rats, they don't drink camel milk. Read it. This is the stupid Muhammad, the genius Muhammad. The Prophet said a group of Israelis were lost. Nobody knows what they did, but I did not see them except they were cursed and changed into rats. How Muhammad he come to this conclusion? For if you put the milk of a she camel in front of a rat, it will not drink it. But if the milk of a sheep put it in front of it, it will drink it. Forget about the stupidity of Muhammad thinking that rats are Jews just because they don't drink the camel milk. But let me give you an advice. If animals don't eat food, it's mean it's not good. If you have a bad food, if you want to see if it's bad or not, give it to the cat. If the cat refuses to eat it, that means this food is damaged. Maybe even have poison. But look at this irony. Even rats refused to drink the camel milk. What about the camel urine? Even rats. Guys, do you see it? Even rats, they refuse the camel urine. Rats. We have a guy, his name is Reza. Are you Reza? Indian guy? I don't think you are him. Let us see this guy, maybe he's a Muslim. <clears throat> Hello? It's been for me the the, the rat Quran. Yeah. Ah, stupid people. Ah, this is what you have. This is what you have. We show you that rats refuse to drink camel milk. Even camel milk rejected by rats. You drink it. Even rats don't take it. And what the answer? I bet you don't even understand what he's playing for me. <clears throat> what happened to the Indian guy? Okay, Indian guy, I will add you to the list of the potatoes. <clears throat> Let us take Hussein. Hello? 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 Yes, my friend, you are live on air, go ahead. Hello? I hear you, yes. go ahead. CP? Yes. Hello, CP. You are welcome. Uh, I am happy today because I am free from the skull. You decide to leave the skull. I, I, saw you, I saw your text after you, you called me. So you decide to leave the cult of Islam? Yes, uh, we speak to you a few days ago. Yes. I'm from Russia, you know, from Caucasus. Yeah. Yes, and uh, for a while I I was thinking about my faith and about Islam and etc. 
and I found out that Islam is a cult. And you are right about it. Not uh, only you, but also another apologist, Hussein. Christian Hussein. apologist. Yeah, Hussein. Listen, how come when I, I, I try to make you say I am out of Islam last time when you call me, you, 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 you were afraid to say it. Why? I mean, what, what made you now make a decision? Because, uh, you know, if you remember, we spoke to the last moment and I keep saying, come on, you know, say I am out of this cult and, yeah. you, and you refuse to say that. What, what, what happened today? Why you, why you decide to leave it? No, no, CP. Uh, it, it's not only because of our last conversation. I'm following you for about two years, actually. Okay. And I watching you a long time. All right. So. Yeah, but what 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 a change? What a change in the last week? What a change in the last week? But something changed because you refused last week to say, "Okay, I'm out of this now." Yes, because I I needed to check some information about what you just said. All right. The time. Well, I'm so happy about, for you. Uh, but, but Hussein, women, Hussein, women Hussein, with, uh, are, you, are, you, are you willing to you know, accept Jesus as your savior as long as you decide to leave Islam? Actually, I think that uh, you Christians have a very good, a very strong point about Jesus and God. And when Muslims say that uh, Jesus never claimed to be God, this is false. According to the Bible, Jesus claimed to be God. And I checked information in the uh, Gospel of John where John said that uh, Pharisees uh, was seeking to kill Jesus because he calls himself a son of God, and that means he made himself similar to God. Exactly. So, uh, and Jesus, he said that too. Jesus, he uh, said, Jesus, all, John, Jesus, he yes. said, I am not from this earth. I am from above. What does that mean? <laughs> It means that, that, that he, he wasn't born. Exactly. He is not from here. I am literally, I mean, I literally, I am not from, from here. Heaven. I am from above. That's it. You know, my kingdom, my angels, yes. you know, I mean, how clear it is. And then he says, they ask him, can you show us the father, which means the Lord God? He says, the one who saw me, he saw him. I am with you all this time. You do not know me. I mean, how clear we can say it. And yet they say, Jesus, nowhere in the Bible says, brother, sister, I trade the Christian. To tell me one place where well, Jesus said, I'm God with me. And I trained the Christian. To tell me that Jesus, he said he's a Christian. I mean, I mean, they are stupid. They have low IQ to the point a donkey even, but even the rat can do better. Jesus is a Christian. Jesus, he did not say he's a Christian. Why Jesus will say he's a Christian? Are you stupid or what? He's a Christ. How he can say he's a Christian, you donkey? So, Hussein, yes, did, you, did you decide to yes. accept Jesus as your Lord, my friend? Uh, I think that uh, it, uh, deeply in my heart, yes, I believe that he is not just a prophet. He is a, uh, he is a messiah, which means he, it is not a title for a prophet. I mean, it's titled for a, di, uh, di, um, the savior. Deity, the right? savior. Who is who is the savior? Deity, God. Nobody can save you. Nobody can save you. Save the savior. And the savior cannot be a human being. Only God can save us. That is the messiah, the savior. Yes. So you are, you are accepting uh, the Messiah yeah, as your clear, Lord? You are, yes, the Bible clearly says about that. Uh, if Bible is true, if Bible is true, that uh, Jesus is uh, God incarnate. So uh, we can't deny this. Yeah. So I'm happy for you, my friend, that you be. So you know, you are, do you consider yourself, like, did you say, I believe in Jesus as my Lord and my Savior? Did you say that to yourself? Uh, yes, uh, maybe I, I I I don't I don't know what does it mean to be saved by Jesus. I don't I I, I can't get it now. But I believe that Jesus is uh, God incarnate. I mean, my friend. I mean, to that I'm so happy for you, and I hope your family will come to the, to see the faith of Christ, and all of them they will transfer from the cult of Muhammad, which even rats refuse his cult. Look, rats they don't drink what Muhammad ordered them to drink. Rats, even rats, they are, you know, rats, animals, they, they have a special sensation. So when a dog, he refuses a food or a cat or even a rat, that's mean this food is not good. So if a rat did not accept it, how Muhammad can be a guidance for us? Uh, I'm happy yes. for you that you, you became a Christian. If there's anything you want to give advice to the Muslims or those who they are listening? Uh, yes, uh, I, I want to say to all Muslims who listen to us right now, just think about one point. Why, if Islam is true, 
why all of Muslim apologists always lie in some, some points to you. They need to lie every day, every time, in order to protect Allah and to protect Muhammad. And uh, if you check the information which Muslim apologists say to you, you will find that it is a lie. If Islam is true, it doesn't need lie, right? Exactly. Yeah, that's a good question. This is a very good point. If Islam is coming from a true God and it's true religion, why do you fabricate stories like uh, scientific miracle in the Quran? Uh, the, yes. uh, you know, I mean, why you fabricate lies to defend the truth? Unless, you see, th th there's no truth there. Uh, CP, CP, do, do you know this phrase, uh, advocate for a devil? Yes, advocate of a devil. Yeah, yeah. But but uh, but we never heard a uh, phrase advocate of God, right? Mm -hmm. uh, what, what I want to say, uh, Muhammad and Allah, they both, every time they need to be protected. They need a lawyer, an uh, advocate. Why? Because they are murderers, they are criminals. And Muslims uh, try to do all their best to protect them from, critic from criticizing. Right? But mm. Jesus, the only person, the only person in the Bible and Quran who doesn't need our protection because he is perfect. And they need a sword to protect them, and they need to slaughter people to protect them. They need to kill to protect them. If anyone say anything negative about Muhammad, we kill him. Why God did not he? Why? What about God? He killed him himself. You know? Why you need to kill him? Yes. You know? If you make a book about Muhammad, they want to no. kill you. If you make a cartoon about Muhammad, they want to kill you. Where is he? Okay, doesn't he have a God and this God is all powerful? He will deal with him. Yes. What the problem? No, we will kill you because this is the only way we can keep Islam going and running. But it doesn't matter what they yes, try, one, uh, Islam is dead already. Yes, and one more thing. Uh, actually, when Muslims uh, kill kill some unbelievers, they kill in the name of Allah, right? Right. But actually, if, if you if you say something wrong about Allah, Allah, Allah is false God, etc., they, uh, they, they w w won't be so angry as if uh, they can be angry when I say, when you say something wrong about Muhammad, because the focus of this, of this uh, faith, of this false cult, is not Allah. Is Muhammad exactly as, is the central person? Just to confirm, just to confirm and, what Hussein uh, said. Especially in Hadith, so if you can uh, find information that name of Muhammad is written on the throne of Allah. Exactly. But know, just to confirm insane. what you said, Hussein. Just to confirm what you said. Remember, in Islam, if you insult Allah, let us say you say the F word to Allah, the Muslim they will give you three days to repent before they kill you if you don't repent. But if you say the F word to Muhammad, they will kill you even if you repent. So which one is important, more important? Imagine, if you say the F word to Allah, they give you three days to repent. And if you repent, you are forgiven. But if you say the F word to Muhammad, there's no repent. That's it, you are dead. So who is more important? Muhammad. This is a religion yes. created for the sake of Muhammad, for his testicles, for his penis, for his, for his pocket, for his... Everything is about him. He is the God, and he used God word as he make it fabricated, to control and to to have more women, to have more money, to have more power. Even Aisha, she said, Inni ara rabbuka yusaru ya Muhammad. I see that your Lord, <coughs> he rushed into your desire, Muhammad. She noticed after Muhammad, women, uh, 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 they start coming to Muhammad and offering themselves. After Muhammad, he made a verse saying, uh, any woman she can give herself to the Prophet. So Aisha, she noticed, I mean, how come this God, right away he make verses for Muhammad about women, they want to sleep with him. Anytime he wants something, he wants women, he is, uh, the verse coming. He wants uh, 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 money, the, the verse come. Anything he wants, right away, Allah, he is rushing. Uh, uh, into his desire. Let me find the hadith on Muslims. Uh, they will not say, I am making uh, things up. So anything else you want to say, Muhammad, before we take another call? Uh, sorry, Hussein. Uh, 
Uh, yes, uh, this is actually not my real name, you know, because of I understand. safety. No problem, no problem, <laughs> no problem. All right, anything else yes, you want to say? Yes, that's all. I, I, that's all. I, I want to say thank you, and you do a very good job. Thank you very much. We are happy for you, and we ask all the Christians to pray for our brother in Christ here, who he just left Islam and accept the Messiah as his Lord and his Savior. And we pray for his family. Even they are Muslims, but we pray for their safety. We pray for their health. We pray for everything about them to be good, to live and enjoy their life. But the best joy is to be in the front of his glory, the Messiah, the Lord, the Savior, for all the joys will disappear, except one joy being with the Messiah. Everything will be demolished. So we are happy for you, Hussein, for accepting the Messiah as your Lord and Savior. And God bless you, my friend. Thank you. Take care. God bless. Bye. Bye. -bye. God, God bless. Bye, Bye. This is the hadith in front of us, as you see. <clears throat> the Indian guy who keeps saying he want to call me, are you sunshine? Are you the one who called himself Sunshine? If you are the one, say yes, I will call you back. It was narrated, Aisha said, I used to feel jealous of those women offered themselves between the bracket to the in marriage. It doesn't say that. They offered themselves, not in marriage, to the Prophet. And I said, would a free woman offer herself? Free woman here is about a woman she have decency, her honor. She have honor because a slave woman, she lost her decency. They rape her, they discriminate her, they insult her, they beat her as Umar Khattab used to do to them. Is a free woman, a woman with honor, do that? And then she said to Muhammad, I said, by Allah, I see that your Lord quick to respond to your wishes. The fact it doesn't say that in Arabic. Yusari'u ila hawak to your temptation. Whatever temptation you have, your God, you rush to it. And this is Sahih. Aisha, she noticed that Muhammad, he used God for his temptation. Anytime he needs something, he make a verse. He want to sleep with the slave, he make a verse. He want to sleep with all the women, he make a verse. And those verses is only for him. Like the verse here in the chapter of al ahzab is about a privilege, not for Muslims, only for Muhammad. Can you believe it? Where is the Indian guy? Okay, if this Indian guy, he posts one more time in the text, just to block him. That's it, we're done with him. I'm not going to wait for him forever. Do we have any Muslim want to, want to call me? One, one more call. Any Muslim would like to call me? Let us see the sunshine. I don't know if he's this Indian guy or not. <clears throat> I'm calling you, sunshine. Answer. Okay. It's, it's not even coming. I mean, I'm calling. It a, it's a, doesn't even make noise. It says, sun is unavailable. Let us do it one more time. <clears throat> Hello. Yes, Mr. Indian, how are you? I'm fine. Okay, so what do you want to say to us? You are very excited. Yes. Hmm. Go ahead. I'm a Hindu. You are a Hindu. Okay, and? What Hindu mean? And what Hindu before mean? You no, no, before. Okay, but just wait. What what Hindu mean? Hindu Hold on. What Hindu mean? Hindu is just a word. What does that Sanat mean? Sanatri is a religion. Okay, why are you, so why you use a word? Are you saying the word Hindu does not mean anything? You don't know 
the word Sanatan. Have you ever de- heard that? Word? No, I never heard of it. But I'm asking about Hindu now. Why are you are giving me a word I never heard of it? I heard Hindu. Can you tell me what Hindu mean? Because you don't know anything about Hinduism, that's why you. This why I'm asking you. This why I'm asking. This why I'm asking. This why I'm asking you. What? You what? Hin- on... uh, this is why I'm asking you. What Hindu mean? You want to know me? What Hindu mean? Yes. Or what Sanatan means? No. What Hindu mean? My question is very clear. I do not know what the word uh, even. So I'm saying the word I hear always. The, you just told me when you call me the first thing you said said I'm Hindu. Okay. Okay. So you said Hindu I'm Hindu. A, so what Hindu mean? Hindu is just a word. Hindu is just yeah, a word. It. Hindu is a word, just a word. This is the discovery, guys. Hindu is just. A, I'm asking you what Hindu mean. I know it's a word. Listen full. First listen full. Don't. I'm listening. I'm asking you. You see, you call me. You said I am a Hindu. I said, okay. What Hindu mean? What's wrong with what's wrong with the question? Did I insult you? I'm saying what Hindu mean. So if you cannot give me the finition, you, so so look, so, you just listen to so look at yourself. You you give yourself definition, but you do not know what the definition mean. You just I am a Hindu. What Hindu mean? You don't know. I I did I give full definition. What Hindu mean? In bet in between you stop me. The Hindus is a word derived from the Indus Valley civilization. What the, Hindu, Hindu, what the word Hindu the real, mean? What the word Hindu mean? What the word? The real, what the word Hindu mean? The Hindu is a word. I know it's a word. The Indus Valley civilization, which the Britishers. What? The uh, what, what the word? What the word mean? Hindu. What the word mean? Are you Are you stupid? Well, okay. Let us say that I am not smart like you, and you are genius. So, what Hindu mean? Explain to me. Go ahead. What Hindu? The word no, Hindu. No, I'm not. But I don't battle like you. Without facts. Okay, show me the fact. Okay, what what the word Hindu mean? Okay, listen, listen, listen. I heard. I heard. I heard. I heard. You are upset because of your sad guru. Sad guru, he said. The guru, he said that the Hindu they have thirty six million gods. Do you agree with him? Who said that Hindus are thirty six million gods? He said. He said. And ever your Christian. Hold on! Don't change. Don't, don't change the topic. Don't change the topic. I challenge, I the, challenge every Christian, every Muslim to show me a verse that Hindus have 36 million gods. So okay, so you are saying that Sad Guru is a liar? When did Sad Guru say that they are 36 million gods? Okay, the video we played yesterday, actually he mentioned there, where there is, you know, uh, uh, in the same video, that there's a three, six, a thir- a 36 million gods. And he said, we are a rich country. I quote him exactly. He said, we have 36 million gods and we are a rich country. He said that. Are you, are you out of mind? The Vedas, the Vedas clearly says 36 kotis means, which means types, no. which means qualities. No, 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 no. Uh, he said, he uh, said 36 uh, million. Okay, let's do this. Let us do this. I will find the video. Okay. And I want you to call me. Actually, you know what? I'm going to take, I want you to say right now. If said guru, he said that we have 36. No, no, I, I want you to. No, you said this is stupid. You said this is stupid. No, I want you to say. I want you to say. Listen, listen if you are sure. If you are sure. If you are sure. What do you do? What do you go and don't change topic? Don't change topic. Don't change. Don't change. Don't change. Don't change. Don't change. Don't change topic. I want you to say, Sad Guru, Sad Guru. I want you to say, if you are there, coward, coward, coward. Be a man. Let, let me talk. Let me talk. Uh, I, I will let you talk. I will let you talk. Just please. Please. listen, 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 listen. You said sad guru. You said nowhere sad guru. He said you have thirty six million gods. So if I find the video, and this is a true, I will put your voice. I will put. I will put your voice next to it. Do you follow priest or priest in the church? So you are okay, okay. So you are saying now that sad guru is a liar. Do you say? Are you saying that he's a liar when he said thirty six million? I'm not saying that. So why you don't say it? Okay, so I'm asking you. Okay, is a statement of 36 million God? Is it a true statement or false? Either you say it's true or you say it's false. 36 court is God. That's my statement. He did not say that. I'm asking you the question. That you see, you are playing like Muslims now. He said 36 million gods. So do you agree that there are 36 million gods? If he said that, or this is a lie. I don't agree. Whatever. Any- 
is it, a lot of is it a lie is it a lie no as long you don't agree is it as long you don't agree as long you don't agree is it a lie say it. say say be a man be a man say that sad guru then say say don't force me to shut don't force me to hang up on you because you're not letting me talk i want uh, we want to finish the topic please speak listen listen are you you are a coward you are a coward you are refusing to answer if he, if, if this is what he said if this is what he said 36 son of muta listen 36 36 million god 36 36 million god shut up you know what i'm going to fight i'm going yeah okay hold on hold on i'm going to find the video i will make a special video just for you son of muta and i will show you that he said 36 million god and i will put your conversation next to his conversation you just admit it and we will we will, we will name the title sad guru is a fraud according to the hindus and you coward you are say it's not true but you refuse to say he's a liar why because you're a potato what he have a gang they will go after you like muhammad they will kill you if you say he's a liar he's a fraud Why you don't say it? 36, actually, if I can't find it now, let me see. I don't remember the video yesterday. I, I, I played the name, but. <laughs> um, I can go to the history in my browser. Hold on. Actually, we have to go in this page where he said, but I have to go and, and review all the videos I played because one of them, he said, we have 36 million gods. <laughs> and I promise you, I will make just a video. Actually, you know what? You see what you did. You just brought humiliation for yourself. You are stupid. Do you follow a priest or you follow the Bible? Well, ask the question to, uh, to your guru. If there is no verses in the scriptures of the Hindus that you have 36 million gods, where this guy is getting the numbers? And why you put him in the stage if he's a fraud? Right? And why you are defending him? When you defend the man, it means you agree with him. You don't defend the man you don't agree with. Why you're defending him? <clears throat> Why you are not even willing to say oh, he's a fraud? He's a liar. Why you refuse even to say if he says such a thing, he's a liar? Let us see. <clears throat> anyway, I, I will I will find those videos after we finish today. I will I will look for them. Uh, I'm not sure which one are those. I'm trying to find the video. <clears throat> but I'm not sure which one. Because yesterday when I did the video, I, I watched a few videos about Sadhguru. And one of them, he said, we have 36 million God. Maybe once people start asking logical questions, heavens will. Go maybe, maybe this is not. Uh, and look what he said here. The second people, they ask a, a logical question, heaven will collapse. Heaven will collapse, which means there is no heaven and there is no God, because if there is no God, there's no heaven, there's no heaven, there's no God. Where is God now? They say in heaven. But you just say the second people, they ask questions, heaven will collapse. Let me see the other one. <clears throat> um, it will be good if we can find the video right away when he said that they are, there's a 336 million God. But I need to listen to them.
one after one. Explanate and this one have a Zachary Nayak. Okay. I'm not sure if this one, they want to say that. A large congregation of people one morning, a man arrived. Uh, here he's telling a story. He stood there in the shadows. This man in India, the most popular deities in India, one of the most popular deities. He's a devotee of Rama. You heard of Rama? Rama is uh, one of the most popular deities in India. If you do not already know this, in India we have 36 million gods and goddesses. Did you hear it, you donkey? Guys, did you hear it? People, did you hear it? Did he say we have 36 million gods? Listen carefully again, you liar. You filthy coward. I want you to call me now. I will call you. I will call you. They will not answer now. Hello? Hello. Okay, did, did you hear him saying we have 36 million gods? <laughs> if anyone says Jesus is not born of Mary, will you believe? This is, don't change the topic, coward. Did, did you, did you hear him saying? <laughs> Did you hear him? Did you hear him saying? Did you hear him saying? See, you coward, you coward son of Muta, apologize for being a liar. You have 36 million gods. Shut up and don't call me again. You are, I cannot respect you. You, you are trying to change the topic. We can talk about anything you want. But you will not admit that you are a liar. What kind of religion have 36 million gods, and why you stop there? What, they stop having babies? So you coward, you accuse me of lying. I asked you what he do, you do not want to tell me. And you want to talk about Jesus in the Bible, what Jesus in the Bible, what he did? Son of a virgin, so what? God, he can do miracles. He's a miracle, he's God. God himself is a miracle. What you can debate about that? You want to say this is impossible? Okay, no problem. We don't lie about Jesus. You lie about your cult. 36 million gods. Our deities in India. Rama is uh, one of the most popular deities in India. If you do not already know this, in India we have 36 million gods and goddesses. 30 million. So 36 million God. Did you hear it? You see, I have nothing, you know, I'm not, you know, I have many Hindu nice people, nice friends. Actually, even I, I have Hindu who uh, uh, sometimes even send donation to me. I'm not against you, my friend. I'm trying to show you the truth. That this cannot be religion too. What 36 million gods? What is this? A corporation? Right. And, and why you stop with the 36? What happened? Gods and goddess. Yeah. And you know, the funny one, you say something, they accuse you of lying. Because obviously he is not a Hindu. Why? Because he never heard this before. Correct? You are the one is not Hindu. I know more about Hindu from you. I learned from the guru. The Guru Ruru, Guru Muru the Ruru Ruru. Ru. So Mr. Guru, he is no different from Muhammad. Muhammad, he believed that he sent Khalid al Walid and he killed the daughter of Allah, the goddess. You are the same. The difference is, Muhammad, he don't want Allah to have daughters, he killed them. When Muhammad, he came with a story that he killed the daughter of Allah, that means he admitted that Allah have daughters, because how he can kill his daughter if she doesn't exist?
You know what I mean, guys? You cannot kill someone that doesn't exist. So when the story in Islam says that Muhammad, he sent one of his companion, his name is Khalid, filthy Khalid, to kill the daughter of Allah, and he found her next to a tree, and she have a long black hair, naked with dark skin. And look, they make her ugly because she have dark skin, supposedly according to Muhammad, you know? According to Muhammad, you are ugly if you have dark skin. So he, he tried to make her ugly in their own, uh, let's say, uh, scale of the beauty. So she have a dark skin. How she? How we will let her live? So he sent his man to kill the one Muhammad claiming that she is ugly because she have dark skin, and he killed her, and she is the daughter of Allah. You are the same. Muhammad killed the goddess. You believe in the goddess. 36 million goddess. And you don't even yet know what the word Hindu mean. What the word Hindu mean? Know this. In India, we have 36 million gods and goddesses. It's a very rich country. See, did I say, guys, the quotation exactly correctly? Even though I just watched it once, he said, I said to you before we play the video, he said we have 36 million gods. I did not mention the word goddess. He had goddess. And we are a rich country. We're very rich. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, I don't see too much different. Cult is a cult, it doesn't matter, you know, for us, we as a Christian, we expose cults. And about Jesus in the Bible, that he is a son of a virgin, is that, is that a bad thing? Is that a bad thing? Prove it to be wrong. What, uh, you know, if you call me to say that Jesus, he did something bad, I will accept and say, okay, show, he showed me something bad. But Jesus, let us say for the sake of argument, that Jesus is not a son of a virgin. Huh. Let us say you are a Hindu, you don't believe in that. Still, Jesus is a very good person. Actually, even your sad guru, your idiot, he said, in, er in order to be something, you have to make Jesus rise on you. Even your guru, he have high respect to Jesus. You don't. That's when you are a fraud. If we go, let us see. Give me a second. My browser have extra security, so sometimes videos don't play. Well, actually, most of the time. Like, come on. I found the video, actually. But it says error, as usual. Let us take it and play it in different browser. Give me a second. Jesus is not a good man. Maybe he's wonderful, but not a good man. If you don't let that man rise within you, then you will remain good and dead. That part of you which has been kept dead for too long. See what he say? He's saying that good man, good man, you know, I understand what he's saying. That at that time, for many, he was a good time, a good man, because he's kind of bringing things which is they don't want. If you don't let that man rise within you, who? That man, Jesus rise within you it's time to raise it this is what your guru he said whatever we are referring to as jesus is not about some man two thousand years ago it's about a certain possibility within every human being so that has to rise it's not that there is no jesus in you 
just you kept him hung, impotent. He needs little empowerment. He needs to be raised. So the whole effort is that part of you which we can call Jesus or Shiva or whatever you like, to allow that to rise. Can you say Shiva is a good man? Yeah, but we cannot compare between Shiva, which does not exist. Nobody saw, nobody who, who is the Shiva. Yeah, and other, other, other fiction. Jesus is real. Jesus is a person who lives between us. The date of Jesus is what we get paid by. Right now, today, is July 28, 2020, based on Jesus' date. He's real in everything. Not a fiction God. So look here, you will see that even this guru, he cannot find something negative about Jesus. But this Indian Hindu, he's angry. He starts insulting. For you are a foolish man. I did not insult anyone. I just said my opinion that, he, you know, like, this is cannot be true. Yesterday we have an Indian guy, he said to me, uh, oh, I said, I saw the, as an example the Buddha priest. They walk next to a prostitution place and girls, they bow in the front of them and they give donation. But he, he is willing to take donation from women doing prostitution, but he is not willing to help them to get out of it. What kind of a priest is he is? He walk, he walk in the street, have a bar, and those, oh, we know what is inside those bars. Those are not really bar. It's way more than a bar. And then this Buddha priest, the, 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 the women who work inside, they go in the street and they bow down in front of him. And they put money in the basket. He have a basket when he walk with him in the street. Well, those are poor women. They are selling their body to feed their kids while you are taking money from them. If you cannot help them, at least don't take their money. The Indian guy, he said, he called me, he said, you said that Indian girls, they do this. I did not say Indian girls. I never said that. I said, Buddha priest. Is the Indian a Buddha priest? I've never been in India. I went to Thailand. I saw that in Thailand. I say I saw it with my own eye. There is a video in YouTube about women, they are beating a woman in Thailand. The Buddha priest was standing just next to them all. Let me see if I can find it. He did not even move, as if he saw nothing. I don't know what was a title, it is going not to be easy. And I saw the same thing when I was there too. I saw women fighting, beating a girl, and the Buddha priest, he walked by, he did not even get involved. I'm sure if he talk one word, they will listen because they obey them. <clears throat> well, it's not going to be easy to find the video I'm searching. Uh, I mean, what kind of a priest you are? Yeah, I mean, there's, if you search like women beaten in Thailand, you will find in this, in this video, it's going to be impossible to find a video maybe. But imagine you are not a priest. And you see a bunch, five, six women attacking a poor girl. And they can kill her. And you are a priest. Wearing your uniform as a priest, as a Buddha priest, walking by. Okay, what is next? What you should do? You make yourself, you saw nothing? Where is your, where is your morality? Even if you aren't a priest. Let us say you are just a human being, walking by. You just watch. That's what I was talking about. They are so much obsessed with their cult, many people, 
to the point they, 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 they defend it blindly. Well, yesterday I said that Hindu women, they used to be burned with their husband when he died. And then an Indian guy, he was upset like this guy. He said, show us. And we showed him in the screen, even that this is from the scriptures, that there's a tradition, the Hindus, when a woman, she die, the woman, she is burned alive. And they get angry. So you don't get angry for showing you Muhammad stupidity and ugliness. You get angry because I showed you something in your belief. It is ugly. I mean, the woman, she did not commit a crime. You see, if she commit a crime, I say, okay, the punishment is severe. It was a severe crime for them. The woman, she did not commit a crime. Her, just her husband passed away. That's all. They get angry. Buddha did not get involved in a human affairs. Everything is an illusion. Okay, well, but this is illusion. Illusion cannot help me. So you want me to believe in an illusion to make me an illusionist? But that will not solve my problems. We need, you know, when we say God, we are seeking help for better life. Not for fictions and philosophy. You know what I mean? Otherwise, we do not need this God. If this God will bring me philosophy, like, you know, the, the Guru now saying, rising within you. Okay, this is a nice word. Okay, but you don't, where is the teaching? And what is going to rise within me? Is that the name word? His name is Jesus? Or it is his teaching? Or it is his method of life? What is that? They try to fool you with nice words, philosophy, but those words are totally empty. They are meaningless. Having a status in the top of hell will not make me live better. This is have nothing to do with better life. You see, when somebody says, that look at the Christians, how their life. My friend, if you see those Christians, those Western, the savage, the savage, those, those the Western, they used, they used to be savage. They used to be very savage. Go and see what they used to be before Christianity. They used to be very savage. Go and read about the Viking who lived for killing. Like Muhammad. Christ, he changed them. That's the truth. People in Brazil, they used to eat people alive. They use what? To eat people alive. Jesus changed them. I told you the story about the, the, the Western man who was going to Brazil and he hired a local as a guide in the, in the jungle. Because he is from that area, he's a tribe lived there, so he will be safe with him. In the way, the white man, he found uh, this person, this Brazilian person. He read a book from time to time when he have a break, when they set to arrest. He told him, what is this? What are you reading? Is it a nice story or something? He said, this is the Bible. The white man, he said to him, you read the Bible? <laughs> Are you st this is stupid, man. We stopped reading this from a long time ago. This is stupid. So they keep going until they, ar they arrive to a cave area and they found a lot of bones and cooking supply, like from old days, and bones of a human being. So the guy, the Brazilian, he explained to him that my tribe, they used to hunt human and kill them and eat them. He said, really? He said, yeah. He said, so why, you don't do it now, right now? Why you don't do it? He said, no, we don't do it. He said, why you don't do it now? What happened? He said, because of the book, you call it stupid in my hand. Because the book you call it stupid, this is the book of Jesus, you are not in my dish today. If the book will not make me a better human being, I do not need this book. 
If you read all the books of Krishna, all the books of Buddhas, you will find nothing make you good there. Philosophy. It's not even practical. It's about making a priest high and making you low. The priest, he sit in the top of the chair, he replaced the God, he sit in the place of the God, and now he call himself the Guru. And then everybody come to the Guru asking wisdom from the Guru because the rest are foolish. Only the Guru he knew. So you became the same as a Mohammedan, subdued, you surrender yourself to an idea that Muhammad is the guru who knows everything. He can help me in everything. But if we look at Muhammad's life, he could not help himself. This guy was a scam. So we bring cults. We create gods. And then those who created gods, they put themselves in the place of the god. They are the guru. Or somebody claimed to be a priest, like we now have some Christian cult, where the this priest is a fraud, like Muhammad. Even there is some of them, they claim to be the Messiah himself. So they take a place of the God in order to scam you and to control you. But God, he came to free us, not to enslave us. God, he don't want to be our guru. He want lovers, not just followers. You follow him because you love him and because he loves you. Not because he force you and scare you. So if this guru could not make your life better, then what is this guru for? Collect donation, create institute, have millions of followers. And then he became a political power. You will find that this guru is very connected with high government official because they need him. He became powerful. He had influence. You know what I mean? All the cult leaders, they have the same propaganda and agenda. Number one, power, authority, superiority, they are superior, they are in the light. You see, the, if you go, you see like there is a stories about monks, even from the Buddhas or, you know, they are living in the cave, you know, humble life. I respect those people. Why this guru is not living in a monk, like as a monk? Well, you know, what is this stage and lighting and a lot of money, millions of dollars, buildings, institution? What is that exactly? And then institute for yoga. And if you want to join the yoga, you are welcome. What this yoga will do to me? self worship Is the yoga is going to feed the poor people in India who they are sleeping in the street? And instead of making a big building for yoga, what about making a school? Right? It doesn't matter if it's Islam or not. Cult is a cult, my friend. False teaching, false teaching. If I have money, and you ask me, we have options to build a school in India for poor children or to build a fancy yoga building, which one I would do? All right? Uh, a person saying, Jesus never exists. He is a myth. Well, I don't know, Mr. Avithra Grow. Maybe you can help me grow. What is the day today just to be sure that you are not fake? You are not a software or you exist? You guys, please don't uh, I mean, talk to people, you plug them. Grow. After 300 seconds, because the admin, he blocked you, you can answer. What is the date today? If Jesus doesn't exist, it's, two, it's July 28, 2020. 2020 what? After Christ? 
But you just said you idiot. He doesn't exist. So your whole country, your phone, your computer, your salary, your life is running by the date of Jesus, yet Jesus does not exist. Somebody saying a small, uh, let us put this in the screen. Jasmine saying, what do you think of saying that a small amount of philosophy lead to atheism, but large amount bring you back to the Lord? I don't believe in both. Because the word philosophy is about you talking too much, saying nothing. And I will make it simple for you. If you listen to Guru, like someone like Sad Guru, you know, like they put back the music, he have to resonate within you, and etc. But he did not give us anything about amount. You see, it's like somebody he he gave me a, a refrigerator. It have a door, it have a frame, but there's no engine. This is philosophy. It's a fantasy. So neither of them will bring you to the Lord or will take you away from the Lord. What will take you away is the delusion you will believe in at the end of the day because of this philosophy. But there's nothing real. Philosophy never help anything. There's no nothing. You know, when you talk about philosophy, it's, you're talking about people like to waste their time. Right? Somebody saying, I think he's a Hindu, that Jesus is a myth, important myth to change the world. Well, you know, just to show you how stupid you are, you cannot change the world with myth. Because if you say Muhammad, as an example, is a myth, and he changed the world, that's when you are stupid. How a myth can change? It cannot. It's a myth. How something that exists can change what is exist? You cannot. Myth is a point of a view of a person. So what is myth for you is read for someone else. But do you have a proof that he is a myth? No. It's just a foolish statement. Correct, guys? And that makes you foolish. Because you say something you can prove. And if Jesus is a myth, well then, how everything exists by Jesus? That's when you are a stupid until now. Why, why you are following the date of Jesus if he's a myth? That means you're a donkey, certified one. You don't believe in Jesus, you believe he's a myth, but you say, if we ask you what the date today, you say July 28, 20, uh, 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 220, after the Messiah. But it's a myth. That means your date is a myth. You are a myth. Your salary is a myth. Your wife is a myth. Big mouth. They talk too much, they say nothing, like a frog. We do not need philosophy to know God. Philosophy created gods of the Greek. Who is the best philosophers in the world? The Greek, Venus, Jupiter, etc. Those are the philosophy. They have a great philosophy. Who said that the Greek, who can say the Greek don't have a great philosophy? It's a, you know, philosophy is a, is a, is a book of entertainment. So you read and you like, let's say, it's trying to play with your mind. It's a, it's a mind game. But at the end of the day, you learn nothing. Somebody saying, I am a Christian. I want to know how to answer Muslim saying, Quran is lingu lingu linguistic miracle. You see, this is a very stupid statement from anyone to say he's a Muslim. Why? Because if the Quran is a linguistic miracle, then why the Quran using a, ling a language is exist before it? What about Quran create a new language? Secondly, if it's a miracle, miracle in which way? Clear? So why we have thousands of interpretation and at the end of the day, Muslims just agree about the interpretation. You ask any Muslim any question about any verse, he give you different interpretation from what the Muslim they say. Watch the video we have yesterday, just yesterday. 
Every single Muslim say, I don't agree with this interpretation. I don't agree with that interpretation. So if Quran is a miraculous language, what kind of a miracle is not making it itself clear? Because the purpose of a language is to speak to me, to explain to me. If that language cannot make things clear, that means this language is not a miracle, it's a stupid. You know what I mean? A miracle is something no one can explain because it is superior in its ability. But the Quran is in disability, not in ability. Historic mistakes, language mistakes, grammar mistakes, in the top of all the mistakes, no one knows what the Quran means save Allah. If you go in the Quran, you will find even the Quran saying it clearly. And let me show you on the screen. Give me a second. Chapter 3, verse number 7. Let us laugh at this language miracle. We have a verse in the Quran saying that there is a part in the Quran, which is a huge part, and actually I can say all of it. No one knows what it does mean, save Allah. I mean, do you see the language mistake, language miracle? To the point I can, I'm going to say something, I'm going to make a miracle. Sharakut, kakarud, karakut, ham, hum, ham, harut. Okay, Christian French, what does that mean? It's a miracle, nobody knows what it means. Those who they are firmly in knowledge, they say we believe without knowing what it means. You believe it? No one knows the hiding meaning of it save Allah. But the Quran is sent as a book of guidance. How the book of guidance have tons of pages. Nobody knows what they mean save Allah. So what is the guidance? I'm, I'm getting confused now. Do you understand? And those who are firmly in knowledge, you see, Quran give definition for the guru. Islam, they have their own guru. The guru in Islam is the one who say we believe in something he don't understand. My philosophy is copied from the Hindu. I don't have philosophy, my friend. I don't believe in such a garbage. Um, Khalid is saying the Jews today mock Jesus and you are so angry about him that he wasn't the Messiah my friend a statement you say it's very funny and very silly because the Jews are the first one who believe in Jesus in fact if not the Jews I will not know about Christ today and I am not angry from the Jews Actually, I appreciate them. If not the disciple of Jesus, which they are Jews, the three or almost four billion Christians would not be exist today. So you are mistakenly judging few Jews who they are the left over of the Jews. Did you ask yourself the Jews who they are uh, exist through thousands and thousands of years? How come they are just Six millions in Israel and more less than 20 million in the whole world. What happened? Because the majority of them, they became Christians. So mistakenly, you are saying, I am angry from the Jews. The fact I am not. I am angry from liars. And that is legitimate. Liars, if you say the truth about Jesus, say it. If you say something is truthful, I cannot be angry from it. I am angry against any liar. Right? And about the temple established, that is your ignorance and your stupidity. Jesus, he said, you can destroy this temple, speaking about his body, and I will rebuild it in three days. And he came back in resurrection. So you are a fool. You do not know what are you talking about. Copy-paste. 
you can destroy this temple. The verses are very clear. Actually, Jesus, he said that this temple will be destroyed. He is the one who said the temple will be destroyed about the physical temple. It was a prophecy, and this is true. It happened. The whole temple was destroyed. And this is a great example about how people they quote in order to misquote. And we are here to spank those people who quote to misquote, for they are liars. And this is our job here, is to expose the liars. Explain that Muhammad split the moon. Well, Muhammad Qadir, I challenge you to show me where in the Quran it says that Muhammad or Allah split the moon. Is that fair, guys? Here we see another example of stupidity. Can you show me where in the Quran it says that Allah split the moon or Muhammad split the moon? If you cannot, you have to apologize for you are a fool. What do you think, guys? Can he show us where it says that Allah he split the moon? Where he says that? Chapter 54, verse number 1, doesn't say Allah split anything. It says the moon is split. And here we find it very funny that he did not say, I split the moon. So who did it? <laughs> this is the verse in front of you. And this is your stupid translation. Uh... Challenge you, Alwan, Fortedo, my Skype ID. Hey, my friend, we, we are out of Skype. You did not call me when I was in Skype. Now we are challenging me. You are a potato. So the hour of judgment is near and the moon is split asunder. Okay, who split the moon? Do you see anywhere it says Allah or Muhammad did? It's reporting for us eclipse. The stupid Muhammad, he saw an eclipse and he claimed the moon is split asunder. And this is additional proof that Muhammad is a fraud. Why? Because he claimed, he said in Arabic, in Tarabat al when Shaq al Qamar. And by the way, this is a total copy paste from the poet of Imr al Qais. Thief. Imr al Qais, he made this phrase about when he saw his girlfriend, his lover. She is beautiful. The Arab, they are racist, as we know. They like white women. So she have a face of a white woman. She is very white to the point when her face appear in the night as if the moon is split asunder from the middle of the darkness, her face appear. And we find that Muhammad, he stole too many of his phrases from the poetry of this man. All right. Look at the thief. This is the poetry of Amr al Qais. That is Sa'a wa Shaq al Qawar. Exactly as Muhammad said. But this guy exists before Muhammad, and this poetry exists before him. Muhammad, he changed the word Danat with the word Iqtarabat, the same but the same meaning exactly the same phrase and they say to you who can make quran like the quran well the quran is copying the point of emerald Qais. and then he copy here sorry he copied look how many copy it as it is putting it in the quran Look how many phrases from one poetry. This is the Quran. And it had nothing to do with the moon. It was about a girl who she is very white. She appeared in the darkness of the night 
and the man he was making a point to flirt with her, that her face is the same as the moon splitting asunder in the middle of the night. And the, the, the one is splitting is not the moon. It is the, the darkness. In Shaq al-Qamar, it's like, you know, you have a darkness and suddenly the moon appear in front of you, shiny. It was about a girl. أَحْوَرٌ قَدْ حُرْتُ فِي أَوْصَافِهِ You have a black eyes. This is the whore. You have a beautiful eyes. I cannot even describe for you. نَاعِسُ الطَّرْفِ بَعَيْنَيْهِ حَوَرْ His eyelashes, they are like very spoiled, sleepy. Around his eyes, or her eyes. And her eyes have a very amazing whitening surrounding them you know inside the eye like the eye will be black and around it will be very white clear he, he, he arrived in the day she arrived in the day of Eid Eid holiday he throw she throw her arrow on me and her arrow go through me And then he says, He left me over like something destroyed, burned, like dust. It's about poetry, about women. I have nothing to do with God. Muhammad, he copy from his poetry and he inserted in the Quran. And yet they say to us, nobody can make Quran. Not to forget to mention that Muhammad, he made it clear, or the Hadith. That Allah, He was copying it from Umar al Khattab. Where Allah, He take from Umar as He said. Read it carefully. And this is Sahih Hadith. My Lord agreed with me in three things. I said this, I said that, I said that, I said this. And look what it says here. And the verse revealed the same as I had said was revealed. Do you see it? So how the Quran is a miracle, nobody can make like it, and Allah is copying our Khattab. Are we clear in that? My friend, I am out of Skype. When we come back, you can call me. We are done for today with this guy. So nobody can make Quran, but Allah copying Umar al Khattab word by word, as I have said. But imagine, nobody can make Quran. Right? Nobody can make Quran. But if Umar, he said the Quran before Allah, and then Allah, he take what Umar said, that's mean anyone can make Quran. Maybe Omar is Allah. You know what I mean? Yeah, uh, Muhammad Kadir. Malik King Sharmon. Oh, okay. And uh, what does this have to do with my topic? What? So you are saying your prophet is copying from somebody else? Hmm. I saw it too. I was there at that time. Everybody saw the moon. You see, there's a guy, his name is Fifi. He said the reason people did not see the moon splitting at that time because it happened for a few seconds. Uh -huh. So what's the point of this moon splitting if nobody will see it? Go watch the video. He was answering a person, his name, the apostate prophet. He said, and I'm quoting, the reason nobody saw it because it happened for a few seconds. Few seconds. And when, then what happened? Allah, he put the moon together. <laughs> and what happened about Judgment Day is in the corner. This is 1400 years ago. So here we see all the reference proving that the Quran is a fraud and anyone can make Quran. Actually, Muhammad himself, he said. What king? What king? What are you talking about, Abdul? Come on. Muslim statement is amazing. Uh, listen to this. Isn't it the Quran says 
that even shaitan he made Quran and Muhammad did not notice how Muhammad received shaitan Quran satanic verses if nobody can make Quran and Muhammad did not notice do you understand what I'm saying if no one can make such a thing the Quran confirmed that Muhammad he received satanic verses and Muhammad he recited them and we got Muslim busted if you watch my video with the Sheikh Abdul Wadud where the liar he says no he did not and then we got him busted it's in front of your face liar so if shaitan he throw in the mouth of Muhammad satanic verses Muhammad recited recited the satanic verses but nobody can make Quran like Allah so how Muhammad did not notice that this is not from Allah who is the best judge if we, if we now if you bring something to Muhammad and say this is here a person he's trying to make Quran and this is a verse from the Quran which one is the who is the best judge to be a Muslim Abdul from YouTube or Muhammad the founder of the cult of Islam the answer Muhammad if Muhammad himself could not recognize which from Allah, which is from Shaitan, and the first confirmed that, and the interpretation confirmed that. Raja, he witnessed that? I witnessed that too. As long as Raja, he witnessed it, that's it. Say hello to Raja. Because the Arab themselves did not witness it. You see, the Muslims, they have tons of false miracles, but let me show you how stupid what you just said. You are saying this is a miracle from Allah, but let us go and do a little digging. And here you see how we get them busted. And this is why they don't dare to debate me. Is it the Quran? Said, وَمَا مَنَعَنَا Nothing refrain us from sending miracle, but because people, they refuse to believe in it. Chapter 17, verse number 59. And this is a verse was said many years after the verse of the moon. So how the Quran saying we never sent a miracle, we never did a miracle. And the verses came after the verse of the moon. Are we listening, guys? And we refrain from sending signs. Chapter 17, verse number 59 only because men of former generation treated them as false so allah aka muhammad he made it clear he refrained from sending miracles and this is a phrase or refer a verse was given long after the moon and that will be a contradiction because if already you gave a miracle you cannot say we refrain are you there muhammad kader are you there he should not. This verse can be accepted if it is before that verse, not after it. Doesn't matter, you idiot. The guys, look. I mean, look at that. Look at the answer. This is what the camel urine benefit is. Low IQ. Are you even listening? You are saying that is to the Arab. Well, Muhammad is an Arab. At that time, they all of them they are Arab. You are idiot. And what does have to do with our topic? The verse saying we refrain from sending miracles, and but this verse is given after the Quran chapter of the moon. So how he said we refrain, which means we did not give you miracles. And you are saying that the moon split is a miracle of Allah. That means there's a contradiction. This verse is a lie. And this is why I say stupidity is amazing. Stupidity is amazing because what stupidity do make you convince yourself that you are right, even we are getting you busted. I mean, my fingers are hurting from the spank I'm doing. Every second you say something, I spank you, and you, you, you post again, and I spank you, and I post again, and you spank you, and you post again, and now my hand is hurting. I don't have health insurance. What I would do now? How many times I did spank you until now, you idiot? I'm asking you. How the Quran, okay, the, the Indian Raja, Raja, he said that, said Raja, said Raja, he saw it. Okay, I'm asking you now. How the Quran saying, after that miracle happened, we refrain from sending miracles if the miracle is already done. And how in Muslim you say that the Quran itself is a miracle and Allah saying we refrain from sending miracles. Guys, are you, do you understand what I'm saying? 
If the Quran is a miracle, that's mean this statement in front of us is stupid. When you say we refrain miracle, we refrain from sending miracles, making miracles, you are saying we refrain from sending the Quran. Correct? If the Quran is a miracle, how you stupid you say we refrain from sending miracles? Obviously, the one who wrote the Quran had suffering from low IQ due to drinking camel urine, a lot of flies in his head, which sucked the blood, and he became so slow. And if you look at the Muslim comment, they will talk about Raja. Raja, he saw it. Raja, from India, he saw it. Raja, Raja, he saw it. I mean, look what we're talking about. Raja, he saw it. Only Raja, he saw it. The rest of the world, they were only Raja was awake at that day, you know. And by the way, how Raja from India he saw it if the time zone is different? Where was the King Raja living? Hmm? Where he was living? I'm so glad you did not say in Australia. That would be horrible. Additional to that, we see Muhammad explain how the earth is a flat and Allah, he come down every third part of the night. If you remember the hadith. You see, Sahih. Allah, he come every third part of the night. This is when the moon split. It was the third part of the night in India too. Can you show the Shia interpretation? Shia interpretation is even more horrible. You know, Shia, they have uh, we uh, like when you read the books of Shia, it is the best cartoon ever. Books of Shia, if I want to go over Shia, I mean, Muhammad is so stupid, Sunni is very crazy, but Shia, they beat everybody. I mean, come on. Don't take me there, please. Don't take me there. But we can mention some stupid stuff the Shia, they believe from their interpretation. Just give me a second. Let us see some. Uh, <clears throat> drinking, as long as we are talking about drinking camel urine. Let us see the Shia. The urine of the imams and their pupil has nothing dirt in it and nothing stinky. It is the same as musk and zafaran. In fact, drinking their urine and drinking their blood forbid us from going to hell. The book of Bihar al-Anwar uh, sorry, the uh, book of uh, Anwarul Wilaya, page number 440. Let me find the reference, the exact book. Um, and actually this is a book here the Muslim Shia they are responding to the Muslim Sunni because the Muslim Sunni they make fun of the Shia saying it's drinking the camel the, the urine of the Imam is healthy and there's no dirt on them so they say to them but isn't it you Muslim Sunni drink the urine of the Prophet isn't it you Muslim Sunni 
drink the water where Muhammad he washed with and Muhammad he said to her this woman her name is Salama the wife of Abu Rafi that fire will not touch your body because you drank my urine or the water I wash with you are ignorant so this is the Shia answering the Muslim Sunni both they have the same garbage Both they have the same garbage. In the book of Al Kafi, it says if you if you eat uh, watermelon in the morning, you will have an, a heart attack, and you you know you will lose. Uh, like when somebody uh, I don't know what they call it in English, you lose your ability in a part of your body to walk. I don't know what they call it in English. This is according to him. If you drink, uh, if you eat uh, uh, watermelon uh, in the morning. And watermelon, according to Shia, there is Sunni watermelon and there is Shia watermelon. How we know the Shia watermelon from the Sunni watermelon? Shia watermelon is very sweet. Sunni watermelon is not sweet. As simple as that. Talking during sex will make you will will, will make you uh, will make your son or kids mute. All right. The book of Al Kafi. Let us find the reference. Amazing, amazing, stupid stories. I mean, both of them, they have the same garbage. <clears throat> but this is now Shia, remember, this is Shia. Okay. This is Al Kafi. Al Kafi for the Muslim Shia is the same as Al Bukhari. This is the most authentic book for the Shia. This is very serious business now. The Shia will kill you if you insult it. Be careful. All right. Let us see here. Let's see. Uh, okay. قال أبو عبد الله عليه السلام اتقوا الكلام عند ملتقى الختانين فإنه يورث الخرس. أبو عبد الله said, "Don't talk when you have boom boom sex, because if you talk when you do boom boom, your children will come mute." And by the way, this is scientifically. Uh, True. Obviously, my dad, he did not talk at all. <laughs> this is the Shia, you know, garbage. I mean, all of, all of it, actually, if you translate the whole page, it's so stupid, it's so crazy, unbelievable. Um, Look what happened to Muhammad when he had eclipse. When Muhammad, he see the eclipse, in a, in a night, he saw the eclipse of the moon. And he did not have sex with his wife. So his wife, she said to him, what made you hate me this night? She said, said to her, I did not hate you at this night, or to sleep with you this night, but I hated to have fun with you, enjoy your body, when there is such a sign of Allah happening. No comment. Uh, the Shia, they explain to us how a person is born as a blind. Why he is born blind? Simply because uh, the man, when he was having sex, he looked at the women private part or her anus. Uh, let us see if we can find it. Yeah, by the way, if you want me to use Google Translation, I can do that, you know. Here it says, <clears throat> um, okay, he said, it is, it is, it is not, it's not a, a recommended, it's hated, to look at the private part, we're talking about when you are having sex, because that will make you inherit blindness. Your children, after you have sex, they will be blind. It is hated to speak when you are doing intercourse, for that will make your children mute. 
he meant here, he is saying in Arabic, he meant the, the, the child. It is hated to sleep after, uh, uh, sorry, uh, uh, before the time of Asha, which means the prayer of Asha, what, uh, like, you know, uh, the last prayer the Muslims they do. Uh, I mean, this is here stupid. It is hated to wash under the sky without towel. It's hated to have sex under the sky, uh, like in even if it's dark, nobody see you. It is hated to do to enter the river without a towel. Uh, it's hated. I mean, many many stupid things. But let us tr translate. So you can see what I'm talking about. This is Shia now. Again, this is before we translate here. This is a book of Al Khisal al Shaykh al Saduq, page number 520. And this is Shia library. Translate to English. <coughs> okay, he said that the Messenger of Allah said, blah, 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 blah. Uh, He hated lover between graves. He hated looking the role. He hated looking at the cheek of women. You see, translation is very, very stupid. He look, you know, at, at the private part of the woman. For that, inherit blindness. You see it. So if you look at the, like you're having sex with your wife and you look at her private part, if you do that and your son get a bright net, your son will be blind. And he hates speech when you are having intercourse. For this is inherent silence, so your son will be mute. Meaning the boy, do you see it? And for sure, this is scientific too. I mean, this is proven to be true. That's why if I wanna, if I get married, I will never have sex talk. I will put a bondage on my, uh, you know? Yeah. I will, I will put stitches. But what if I say something? What if I say a word or something? You know what I mean? Don't do that, be careful. You talk, when you are having boom boom, your son will come mute. He's born mute. Why? So now we knew what, why those people be mute. Here we go, this is the reason. You know? Or like, if, if somebody have a, have a problem with his uh, sexual problem, according to the Shia Imams and their leaders and their God, uh, if you wear a black shoe, your penis will be always asleep will lose ability to have sex. You have to wear a yellow one. Uh, let's see. I need to find that. But anyway, I mean, it, it's endless. All is stupid. Yeah, we heard, we heard, uh, we heard the guru, sad guru saying that the Hindus, they have 36 million gods, right? The Muslims, they have Al Hassan, who spoke 70 million languages. Let us find the reference. Only Al Hassan, the grandson of Muhammad. It says here. <clears throat> Blah 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 70,000 thousand language and those languages are different from each one and I am the one who speak all those languages who is the one Al Hassan so the Hassan is speaking about himself that there's two cities for Allah <clears throat> let us do translation so people will not say we don't understand anyway okay Allah has two cities, one in the east and one in the west, not Morocco. Morocco, the translation is false. I know all languages. 
what in them and what is between them and what they have executes other but where is the thousand thousand translation did not come yeah that did not translate the word thousand thousand i think you to uh, go back get confused yeah in arabic it says a thousand thousand seventy seventy thousand thousand language you know yeah this is this is shia sunni is the same garbage doesn't matter really <clears throat> you know that the shia the shia like you know there is a there is the grave of al Hussein and al Hassan. the shia they told that the mud of their their their, their, uh, their grave it's blessing to eat it blessing to eat it the mud the, the dust and now in those graves they have a problem they have to add sand around the graves always because the Shia they come and they eat them and they say they claim if you eat them that is a medicine for you and this is the reference All mud is haram, except the mud of the grave of Al Hussein. It is a recovery. It is a recovery. All mud is haram, the same as the pig flesh, and the one who eat it, and he die. We will not pray on him except eating the mud of the grave of al, -Hus al Hussein, for it has a recovery and healing in it from every disease and the one who eat it with desire like uh, like he's really tempted he loved it too much you know like he he, he eat it not for a reason of uh, healing he ate it just for that's a food he will not be recovered do you want to explain why people are eating it? Nobody is going to cover. So obviously you have something wrong with you. Let us look, look at the translation. Translate to English. The clay is all, all is forbidden as pork. And whoever eat it and dies from it, I will not pray on him. Which means there's no, he's not, he's not a Muslim. He's not a Muslim. Except the clay of Hussein tomb. Do you see it? This is the Shia garbage. If we continue, I mean, this is endless. I mean, we will, you know. So we will stop here. Please cut the part where we spoke about the hygiene. Like cut this video parts, making make it parts because it became so long. And the funny, I say to myself today, I'm going to go for only like 20 minutes maximum to make the video, to make it easier for them to download it. Here we go. This is my 20 minute. Welcome to Christian Prince channel. His 20 minute is... Anyway, so I want to say thank you guys for being here. May the Lord bless you. As you see, many cults, many garbage. People want to take advantage of you. Uh, we do not need a guru. We do not need a middleman. Those are middlemen that exist to take advantage of us most, mostly especially if they want something from you. God is always there. You want something, you ask the Lord. You don't ask the man. When I pray to Jesus, I do not need Paul or Peter or John or Luke. They are my brother in Christ. They are the fathers, the great Christians. Yet we don't need them. For they and us, we need Jesus only. There is only one man who is God who came to this earth. Himself, God himself. He can help you. The rest are not needed. They can help you in teaching. They can help you 
uh, uh, to make you uh, uh, like understand something may be hard for you to accomplish by yourself but at the end of the day there's only one person he can help and anyone ask you for a return but no, it's not for free obviously he is not from God anyone will try to take advantage of you because you follow a teaching he is not from God Our Lord make many angry, and today we saw an example from many other religions. Atheists they hate Jesus, Muslims they hate Jesus, Hindu they insult Jesus, as we heard this guy saying today. But you insult him for his good, not for his bad. You have nothing against him accept your faith you feel guilty for he's so good you feel dirty for he's so clean this is why a person who is so dirty he try to make everyone else look dirty unless they are then you are truthful but usually those kind of people they try to smear you to bully you and this is Islam and other cults. They try to bully the other ones. You see, everything we say about Islam, it is by reference, in the screen, from their books, not a single thing we say. We did not show reference, proving what it said. And they are the ones who said it, not us. When we say Muhammad drink camel urine, when we say Muhammad, he takes shower with dead donkeys and dead dogs and women blood from period. When we say Muhammad, he have lies. When we say Muhammad have sex with all his wife without washing, he washed at the end after having sex with 13 women or all the slaves. When we show you Muhammad saying, if you eat, don't wash your hands, just let somebody lick it for you or you lick it. If a food fell down in the ground, don't wash it just to swallow it. If a fly fell down in your soup, Dig it in the soup and drink it. Can anyone believe in such a garbage? If a fly fell in the soup, it was narrated by Abu Sa'id al Khudari that the Prophet said, If a fly falls into the vessel of one of you, let him dip it and drink it. This is more explained hadith. Muhammad claimed that the fly, one of its wing have disease and the other one have medicine. The science of Islam. When a fly falls, down, falls in the drink of one of you, he should fully dip it and then throw it away because there is a disease in one of the wings and the cure in the other. So which means you drink it. And what do you do? You dip it more so you can wash the fly inside your soup. And supposedly that will protect you from any illness because one wing have a medicine and the other wing have illness. The wisdom of the Prophet of Allah. Who can beat such a wisdom? Nobody. And as you see, this is Sahih al-Bukhari, hadith number 3321. So everything we said, everything we mentioned, covered by reference and proofs. We don't do bashing. We do education. And the one who have 30, 36 million gods, you are not better than the one who have one god. For all, is it still the same. Uh, look, just to give you an example of Islam, how good Islam is. You see, we said, if you remember, if a God who will not make you a better person, that means you are following a devil. May Allah guide you, CP, or break your back. 
first of all you idiot Allah guide not the one who he misguide and this is shown as the stupidity of your prophet because he claimed that we are misguided by Allah not we are guided so why you are asking me may Allah guide you when uh, Allah said to Muhammad are you going to guide the one who Allah misguide <laughs> Who is the one who misguide us? Allah. Are you going to guide the one who Allah misguide? You cannot. So why are you are asking Allah to guide me when Allah He says Allah is the one who misguide me? That's showing your stupidity. The second part saying. Me, uh, uh, or break your back. Okay, obviously your God, Allah is not doing that. I can go right now, I can carry the refrigerator alone by myself. But here I have a question. As long you are saying that if somebody, his back is broken, who broke the back of Muhammad? When Muhammad, he lost his tooth, his front tooth, which is funny. I mean, how Muhammad, he was saying, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. He was saying Bismillahir Rahim because all his front teeth is gone. Do you think Allah He broke his tooth or his teeth? When Muhammad claimed that you have a sperm coming from your backbone, and Muhammad He cannot have babies, do you think Allah He broke his back? When Muhammad He say that if Muhammad Allah He said if Muhammad fabricating verses. Or Quran Allah will cut his artery and then Muhammad he died by cutting his artery from poison do you think Allah he cut his artery for me I don't think so Allah is a fake God does not exist but Muhammad is a stupid liar he never thought he would die in such a way so he made a statement and later the statement came back on him and maybe our Lord is the one who made his artery made him made him admit how he's dying for he's a fraud so you can pray for me as much you wish my friend one day i will die and the muslim they will say allah killed him ah, who care say as much as you want i killed allah before he killed me i killed allah long before as you see people leaving islam left and right and my books are translated to all languages in the world Soon we will have in Chinese, in Korean, just wait. And I will publish them for free. For what? For free. So the whole world will laugh at your garbage cult belief. And by the way, if you are a person who speaks Russian, or Malay language, or Indonesian language, or Albanian language, those books are available for free for you to download as a gift from me to those who speak those languages totally for free and the admins they have links for those books so you might download if you speak those languages i hope soon we will have translation for the turkish you know and more and more languages the lord is a great and the lord he bless us People, they ask me, they say, well, don't you need money? I need money. Everybody need money. But as long as the Lord, he provide me with a piece of a bread in my table, I'm fine. As long he provide, as long he provide me with a roof in the top of me, I'm paying for my internet. God is good. We give for free, yes. But who said the Lord will let you go down? He will not. I saw a comment of a Muslim saying, maybe Christian Prince, he got support from big CIA or Israeli Jewish organization. Uh, actually, I want to make a video about it, but the coward, he deleted. Uh, that's very funny. Because as I know, those organizations still, they will need to make money too. Uh, actually, I have an offer from a printing company to print my book and they said to me we can sell millions of it we have to sign an agreement with them and I refused 
I refuse to sign the agreement. If a person he like to make money, my friend, he will not give his books for free. And those organization, I never heard of them. And why you don't do the same? Why you Muslim don't make books and give it for free? Let your organization support you if there's exist. I have no organization support me, not a single one, and I will never accept even an organization to support me. Because most of organization, they have their own agenda. I'm a free man. I say as I wish, I talk as I like. No one can buy me. I serve my Lord, not the devil. And this is why uh, they, 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 you know, they try to explain, okay, who this guy, I mean, who, I mean, the Jews support him, the CIA support him. And, and you know, I attack, I, I, I speak against the CIA. I speak against many rabbis. I speak against many false Protestant priests, many false Catholic uh, teachers, many false even Orthodox. Actually, I'm going to make about an Orthodox priest a video soon to get him busted. But I speak only against the liars. Doesn't matter who they are. I don't take a side. I take only one side, the truth. The truth will set you free, and the truth is my Lord. So a priest, he claimed to be a Catholic or a Protestant Orthodox, or he's a rabbi, Jewish rabbi. It doesn't matter. Liars are liars will end in fire. We got them busted. So don't you think we are just exposing Islam? We are exposing every single liar exists. For those are the enemy of God. The Lord, he said, be aware of false teachers. The Bible speak about false teachers who will come within the church to deceive you. How they will come? They will come to you in the clothes of a sheep. But he is a wolf. Child molester like Muhammad. So be aware, my friend. Not everyone says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of my father, but the one who do his will. From their fruits, you shall know them. So we judge Muhammad by his fruits. We judge the priest, the sheikh, the guru, whoever they claim by their fruits. However, fruits with wrong faith still is a bad fruit. If you have no faith in the Messiah, you will never have a good fruit. Even if you claim to be a person who gives charity. The most wonderful fruit is the fruit feeding the spirit, not only feeding the mouth. For a person happily, in a spiritual way, he is in heaven already. A person who is not happily spiritually, he is just in heaven of drinking and sleeping, and he have no joy. After he finish eating, the joy of the taste of the food is gone. But a person who have a joy of a spirit, he is always happy all day long. The Messiah in the cross, he said, forgive them, Father, they don't know what they are doing. That is a happy spirit. He is in the cross. He have nails in his hands. He have an arrow in his chest. He is bleeding. He have nails in his feet. And now it's to think, time to think about, forgive them, Father, they don't know what they are doing. For he is a happy person. Have no anger. Have no evil on him. He have a spirit of love. I hope we learn something good, and I hope tomorrow, or maybe today, I will be able to go live again. Don't forget to download the videos and cut them pieces, share them with your friends, add subtitle. And with this I say, may the Lord bless you. Christ is Lord. Islam is false. And see you soon again. Take care.